Friends, today's NRI Samai program from Los Angeles brought to you commercial free by listeners like you. Your generous donations make possible for us to stay commercial free. And today's show is pre recorded. If you have a question for the guest, please send an email to NRI Samai at gmail.com. We will follow up with the guest and find the answer for you. Thank you for your support. Friends, welcome to NRI Samai. This is uh, Sri Hari, your host for today's show. Uh, we have uh, Medavi Gandhi. She is uh, the founder of uh, Happy Hands Foundation. Uh, Happy Hands Foundation is um, an organization. It's a non-profit organization, which is uh, helping the indigenous indigenous uh, artists across India by promoting their uh, artwork and uh, uh, giving them a helping hand. We will we will hear more about this. Um, Uh, initiative from Medavi right now. Medavi, welcome to NRI Samai. Hi, thanks, Srihari. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, we read about you and uh, it's an incredible work that you are doing. Uh, could you please uh, tell what uh, Happy Hands Foundation does? Uh, thank you so much and thank you so much for reaching out. Um, Happy Hands basically is a non-profit that works to revive traditional art and craft of india and it seeks to empower artisans of india in the process and uh, one of our underlying missions is to encourage young people uh, to uh, you know become craft entrepreneurs or um, you know uh, sort of um, acknowledge the culture and, and rich heritage that india has to offer i see excellent uh, uh, so what exactly uh, does it mean do you guys have um, a workshop where people can come and uh, do their artwork or uh, do you go to different places and collect these how does it work so we actually have different programs uh, our cluster development program and enterprise support program and uh, design training they are mostly in rural areas so we visit different craft clusters and put a, com- a community together we mobilize a community or sometimes we partner with an existing artisan group or individual artisans also and uh, conduct a needs analysis first of course to understand what are the problems in the community uh, mostly it's to do with market access but it's also a lot but market access is a lot to do with the product that's being offered uh, and so a lot of our work goes into training artisans to first understand the trends uh and innovate so innovation is a big big um, uh, a task that we try to bring about in indian arts and craft and encourage the artists to think better and you know probably think differently yeah that that's great uh, i mean how how did you come about uh, this idea um of uh, starting such an organization i was actually all of 22 years old when i started this and that's because uh, when i was 21 i was on an internship with unesco which was to do with documenting different crafts and i had to meet with a lot of artists and speak to them and in the course of that i realized that i myself had not known anything about these crafts um, because it was severely lacking in our education system at that time to study about these or interact with these at any uh, point of time during our education be it school or be it college or be it post graduation um so that introduction was missing and i felt really bad about having not known about not having uh, you know acknowledged this so that's when i definitely knew that the youth of the country needs to uh, promote the craft so as to you know sustain these i mean we are the future the young people are the future and they have to be encouraging and accepting of the craft and at the same time artisans also need to understand what they need to create for a market that changing every day for a market that is uh, that has uh, become open to international markets and you know in a globalizing scenario of craft space is huge challenge because these are traditional crafts made by hand more expensive more time consuming and uh, yeah so so that was a challenge that i felt i needed to work on it and that's how it started yeah but i mean most people when they look at something and they like it they they try to purchase 
and uh, maybe if they really like it maybe they'll purchase two or three but um, you took it completely different route right do you, uh, where did you kind of get the inspiration do you, do you have any other background that you took any initiatives or is no not at all no 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 in fact i was doing my mba and which is when i met with the artists and you know they were always very hopeful will you help us would you come back and that was the time i said yes i will i will come back and i never purchased anything from them at that time because i felt that purchasing at that point of time would just um you know it would it would give me a satisfaction at that point of time that yeah i've done my bit i didn't want to do that i wanted to do more and I, because i knew there was so much potential and it, it was just that why aren't there enough craft institutions why aren't there enough organizations that are working for artisan education not marketing per se but artisan education is equally important um so yeah that that definitely led me to thinking and i said that you know what i'm going to give it at least a year or two and see what i can do and i was all of 22 so i had the time and i said that yeah i, I can always work later and get a job later but i need to do this first and it just became you know uh, it, it just slowed on yeah so that was uh, two years ago right and that was five years ago okay five years ago so from yeah. Uh, from the time you started this organization um, where are you guys uh, right now what are the different things that uh, you are doing it okay. so it's been a long long journey and uh, we've experimented with a lot of things and in due time we've come to realize what we really want to do um, of course because it it it's a lot to do with understanding how the community is receptive towards our programs and workshops um so we started definitely with uh, you know marketing oriented workshops and you know enabling artisan enterprises to be self sustaining to be able to raise the right funds um and you know only when we were in the second year did we want to work entirely on artisan education and educate him on the design process on you know observing things around him and then making something uh, and the subsequent laws we had to struggle a lot because you know we were also getting youth volunteers and sort of you know having young people interact with the arts through workshops and events and there was a lot on our platter and we were a very small team and we had limited funds um but but we were supported hugely by corporates here so we understood that uh, exploring corporate for you know gifting through handicrafts is a huge untapped market potential there again so we did that and uh, that has sustained us for so long um in fact uh, we also started with an artisan residency which is the first kind in india um usually artisans from rural india don't get to attend residencies just like contemporary artists do um at the residency they um they they you know experiment with materials they exper- experiment with different kind of colors they make different sort of things they volunteer with non profits and they also hold open studio discussions with the public so that there is no avenue for the public to engage with the arts um so so these kind of things have been very new and uh, these have helped us shape um, the all round development that we were trying to reach yeah you mentioned about um, uh, getting help from corporations uh, maybe if you can run down um, the workflow of uh, completely from when you contact a, um, a community to how do you bring it into the market and who are your uh, mm-hmm. primary target customers just at a pretty high level so uh, people can understand uh, how this uh, organization works is right absolutely so um the organization has different programs like i told you but our flagship program is the cluster development program which is run in the villages um so this program we first partner with individual artists or an artist led group or a self help group that's run by artists um during the partnership phase we conduct our research we understand the community and its needs and its analysis um 
the theme analysis helps us draft the program and an action plan. So that's the second stage which we call dialogue. So after partnership comes dialogue where we um, start interacting with the artisans and craftspeople through workshops in culture, motifs, different kind of uh, traditions they follow, what kind of stories they've grown up listening to, you know, so as to understand where they're coming from because we don't want them to create something that's very distant from their culture. Um, and we don't definitely believe that innovation should come from looking at things that are outside, but it should come from uh, from inspiration in the thought process that's within. It's important to dig within. So the dialogue stage helps us achieve that. Um, then comes aesthetics, which is when we try to experiment with different kind of color tones, different kind of uh, processes in making color, or you know, within textiles there are different kind of aesthetics involved. So, and uh, during this phase, we uh, get in touch with Parkwick. Sorry, sorry, yes. So you are um, uh, you are working with them in terms of um, experimenting the designs and experiment, telling them to use different colors and. Uh, so this process is going on, right? Yeah, that's a part of their education process. I see. Okay, good. Right, and after that, that's so that, that's the time we get in touch with corporates and sort of uh, you know seek um, support from them in terms of letting these artists exhibit at different corporate houses or connect with them over products, and that's how the process moves. What kind of corporations are these? Uh, so we've worked with Google. So the Google Serve program, which allows uh, Google volunteers to come down and um, you know work with artists and sort of help them. Uh, they've also allowed space in their lobby during festive time for artists to exhibit their work. Uh, we've also worked with Kiwoni Business Travel, Kiwoni India. Uh, we've worked with HCL. We've worked with Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Uh, Coca-Cola and PepsiCo have been two of our sponsors for different programs and uh, you know different kind of activities as well. So yeah, we, we work with these kind of corporates. I see. And um, how do they benefit in turn? Uh, what is their uh, business model in terms of uh, promoting you guys? Uh, so, so for example, with PepsiCo, it's mostly been uh, branding and the kind of audience that they also want to reach out to is young people and uh, and the masses, and that's been our target audience as well. Uh, so I think uh, from a marketing point of view, PepsiCo does see a lot of value in their brand reaching out and communicating the right things with the audience, uh, with their target audience. And as far as Coca-Cola is concerned, we've always worked on their CSR angle. Um, and even with, I mean, with the others, it's always been a part of their CSR. So, yeah. Like with Coca-Cola, we've also worked on their uh, ad campaign, which is, uh, which was to do with Diwali, when they use the traditional folk art form to communicate the whole festive spirit. So we made, our artists made a whole installation for them and the artworks. And so yeah, there was a great integration between marketing, communications, and art. Excellent. And uh, how do you reach your uh, target audience, and who are they actually? And how is it uh, mainly through the art galleries, or do you have a physical store, or do you have a... Um, uh, do you have an online presence? How does it work? Uh, so yeah, we, we do have an online presence, and we have retailed for some artisans across uh, different stores in India. Uh, but primarily, it's been through public events which we have done, uh, which are not at art galleries, but more at public spaces. These can be malls, these can be parks, these can be community centers. So we've explored more of these um, you know, community-oriented areas. Friends, NRA Samay is a non-profit independent alternate media from Los Angeles, USA, which brings positive stories from grassroots activists from all corners of India and across the world. NRA Samay does not rely on corporate funding and our shows are commercial free. We only rely on your donations. Corporate funded media is driven by the TRP rating and profits are blurring the distinction between news and entertainment. Why do our news channels talk so much about cricket, movies, accidents, popular figures, personal lives, babies of heroines, gossips, etc., while they should be covering the struggles of people, inequality in our society, rural issues, and border security issues? Why did our media raise some corruption crusaders to the sky on one day and shut them off completely when graft charges were raised on those cor corporate sponsors? Media relies so much on the corporate funding and government blessings 
that they cannot report independently. NRA Samay is different. We don't accept funds from any corporations and hence our shows are commercial free. We completely rely on donations from you. Please consider donating to NRA Samay and please go to nrasamay.com and donate generously. This is the only way together that we can continue NRA Samay. All donations are kept transparent on nrasamay.com. And if you have any questions, please write to nrasamay at gmail.com. I see. And um, overall, uh, over these years, uh, how the how has been the response from uh, from the people? I think uh, people have definitely grown more sensitive towards the arts today. In I mean, when we started, there were just about three to four big names in the craft sector. And um, we carved a niche for ourselves, but today we see so many young people starting out, uh, you know, small little entrepreneurial um, setups and design studios which work with the crafts. And more than anything, I think we see that um, different corporate, I mean, different brands such as GE or SBI, they're all using different arts in their communication. And um, it's wonderful to see that there is a growing acknowledgement around crafts and People are recognizing it slowly. I see. Excellent. And um, and as far as um, your organization is concerned, um, I'm trying to uh, scale. How much? Uh, what is the revenue right now? Or what is the turnaround? Um. So uh, we have a small turnaround of around 35 lakhs. That's that's around. Uh, that's about our turnover. Yeah, that's not uh, small. I think that's a huge turnaround. I think for a <laughs> for a very niche uh, type of um, business, because I, yes. yeah, it's not mainstream thing, right? It's a, so it's a pretty. It's now we we we've, we've impacted more than twelve hundred artists in across thirteen states of India. So, um, given that scale, I I mean I feel there's more potential, and uh, I mean hope I mean if things go well, we hope to do better in the coming year. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, um, so, the, do you have contracts or some kind of uh, setup with these artists? I, I didn't get that question. Could you repeat? Do you have an exclusive contract or something like that, as far as the designs or uh, as far as their work is concerned? How do they get paid? No, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. In fact, no. So uh, we don't. Um, I mean, we. We don't hold artists exclusively to us at all. In fact, we seek opportunities for them and connect them directly to their market, to their consumer, or to the person they, they should create designs for. Uh, so sometimes we do stay in the middle to understand if everything is right and so that there is no kind of a conflict at any point of time. No conflict, no no problem, no in, no conflict of interest is what I mean. Uh, but we don't charge artisans for these kind of things, and we don't keep a commission or cut out of any of these kind of things. I see. And uh, so, um, whatever I mean, you are providing a platform, right? So, um, whatever people are purchasing, the, all the money goes to the artists. Yes, yes, it all goes to the artisans. Um, I mean, we sustain ourselves through the corporate donations, through different kind of services we provide. You know, if somebody wants to get a wedding card done, or if somebody, you know, wants an advertisement done, or there's an installation, we definitely earn out of those kind of things. Apart from our very, very, um, uh, you know, great, uh, gracious uh, donors that we have. I mean, they're really large-hearted, and we've been supported by them. But um, we don't charge artists. Definitely, that's definitely uh, a very Clear agenda for us. Excellent. This is great, and uh, this kind of initiative definitely needs a um, lot of visibility and a uh, lot of support from a uh, wide range of people. Um, how many are um, working in this organization? So, like I said, we're a very small core team of uh, four people, three to four people actually. But when there is, uh, for example, when a program is running, then we uh, get people on uh, project or contract basis to work through that project. I see contract basis, and then the program is over. But but it's hard to uh, keep that kind of. Um, Flow, right? People. No, actually, actually, in this kind of setup, it works beautifully because designers also do not like to be employed when there is no as such design work, or you know. So uh, it works beautifully for even the artists because a lot of crafts of India are seasonal. 
uh, plus there are you know different kind of festival uh, festivals that happen when the artists need to travel to market their works so at that time we cannot hold village workshops so it doesn't um, financially <laughs> make sense for us to have somebody on role at that point of time yeah, absolutely and um, do you also uh, sell these overseas do you ship them or uh, any plans um yes we do plan to uh, we definitely do plan to we have done this in the past uh, there was uh, a very nice initiative called shopo.in uh, which unfortunately got sold out to snapdeal uh, but prior to that we were selling online and uh, we were shipping to countries like singapore um and um, we have had fundraisers in the us um, you know at uh, the hunt school through one of our volunteers um but but yeah we definitely are looking at expanding to a new online setup that we are going to be creating on our website soon okay that is excellent i think a lot of people uh, would be interested in uh, such kind of work which is all uh, man made um, i mean human made and uh, the uh, indian actually the cultural uh, kind of art artisans and you know supporting them and uh, keeping this um, art alive i think there would be no right theory i would i would definitely like to encourage our listeners to you know somehow encourage the arts you know buy them or you know engage with artists over workshops so just somehow support the arts because there's so much that india has to offer yeah absolutely absolutely and um so as far as uh, your next steps um what would you uh, like to do i mean you mentioned about um, you know expanding but uh, is there anything else that uh, you are planning to do yes we are trying to um, you set up a new online museum that is run by the people um, by way of having them contribute images of any craft item that they have had in their family uh you know which which is old because you know as times change craft techniques have changed and you don't see the same thing anymore so for example if my grandmother had a certain sort of box i can't see that sort of box anymore i don't see that sort of workmanship anymore so um in keeping with reviving tradition we definitely want coming generations to have a look at these photographs and um, for people world over to see what india has been like and how culture has evolved uh, we are trying to put an online repository of um, photographs which are contributed by people and um, apart from that we we'd also be um, encouraging artists to replicate some of the old old items and do workshops around that in different schools and colleges you know like museum traveling and visits and um, and yeah that that's one of our plans for this year that is amazing i think that's a very good uh, very very interesting thought i never um, even imagined uh, such an initiative um <laughs> is there anything uh, that i haven't asked or uh, you want to uh, tell our listeners uh no i mean uh, there's nothing of that sort but i just want to say that you know each each craft item has a story behind it has a has a community's culture and their traditions behind it and it's it's good to keep digging and keep understanding these because uh, this will lead you know it it will pave a way for the future and you know future innovations so yes i would just encourage them to stay connected to that roots that's all yeah i am actually watching a uh, uh, few of these um, pictures that are posted on your facebook mm-hmm. page uh which is yeah. uh, facebook.com/happy uh, hands foundation happy hands f right i think that's your right topic. yeah some of these are uh, real so colorful and uh, they it's almost like the one picture is telling story from uh, beginning to the end end to end it's telling the entire story some of those are uh, such a beautiful pictures right. um it's, i think it's impossible Uh, for somebody to sit in a, you know in a, on a computer and design this stuff and mass produce uh, such kind of things because you can't you have to be connected uh, with your culture grassroots and you know a lot of lot of um, probably ancestry goes into it uh, so the yeah this kind of things i don't think uh, you can get anywhere else but uh, directly from from these artisans absolutely i mean they are they are a storehouse of talent yeah 
and uh, can you uh, maybe tell um, if you are traveling right you are meeting these people in person most of the time yes absolutely i'm mostly traveling yeah and um, can you tell um, uh, maybe a story of uh, uh, you know so some of these artisans maybe a story of a community how uh, you went there and maybe you got inspired or you know whatever so that um, our listeners can connect to exactly what are uh, these people and you know how do they go about right absolutely uh, so i'm going to talk about uh, um two families that i met in andhra so when i was traveling to andhra first it took me a long long while to just get to them and uh, seek them out because these are only two families that are remaining now who are practicing the art of cherial they make cherial um, scroll paintings and uh, i mean they make cherial scroll paintings and masks and these masks are beautiful and they are made of only tamarind seed powder uh it's a tamarind seed paste uh sawdust powder and glue and you know waste cloth that you find around which is you know mix into a paste and they make the mask with it and put wonderfully uh, made natural colors in them to make the masks brighter and beautiful and uh, it's only two families that are practicing this art now and their children are not taking this ahead so um when i went i was really surprised that it's a dying art and uh, though the emporium is supporting them there's there was no other sort of support for them uh, so through the different kind of artists and residencies and uh, support programs we had we engaged with those two families and today they are making you know wonderfully done mask boxes and different kind of uh, calendar scrolls for people and uh, they are actually coming into the market through that I mean, cherial is a very less known art. What is the name of the art again? As uh, so actually, the place is called Cherial in uh, Varangal district of Andhra Pradesh. Um, but the art is basically uh, it's nakash, it's uh, it's mask making and scroll painting. I see. Very interesting. And um, when you met them, they probably did not have a big market. They didn't. I mean, they were only supplying to the emporium. I see. What emporium? Like Lepakshi or something? Lepakshi emporium. Yes. And they were only supplying to Lepakshi. And um, how did uh, their life change, uh, if at all, if um, anything big? You know, initially they were actually very averse to change. They didn't figure what would happen, and what if they made things and they didn't get sold and. you know there were those kind of fears because um, these are always there in every community that you know what if they put in their time and innovate and make something what if the market doesn't like them yeah. so um i told them that it's fine you know it was a personal thing at that time and i said you know what if if these five pieces don't sell i will buy them off because i thought you know i mean what if somebody doesn't really buy them i will gift it to my friends but these are too pretty to have been ignored and uh, those boxes you will not believe sold at stores they sold at the park hotel um, outlets here in delhi and they sold for more than 1200 rupees friends anara samay is a non-profit independent alternate media from los angeles usa which brings positive stories from grassroots activists from all corners of india and across the world if you have any interesting episode you would like nri samay to cover we will be happy to do so nri samay would also like to encourage amateur journalists who have a flair for highlighting current events you can be part of our citizen journalist team you could cover an important event interview victims of an atrocity or document an inspirational story the idea is to have a mix of experience throughout all parts of the world preferably supported by an audio or a video clip of your story to be aired which will be the curtain raiser you can also submit your opinion articles on important topics to nri samay we will be happy to put it on nri samay.com in the opinion section all your work will be credited only to you and if you're interested please send an email to nrsamay@gmail.com yeah that is amazing so how uh, yeah. so are they making more now or uh, how is their uh, yeah it now depends on the order because these boxes take a lot of time to make so whenever the store places an order they make those boxes so they are still making them 
Okay, but uh, they are making their living on based on uh, you know what they're making right now. Ah, uh, no, more than living. I think um, more than living. I think what we impacted is their children's interest in this. Hmm. So because they saw that this was such an interesting product, they automatically felt, ah, even we want to do this. You know, we want to try. We want to give this a shot, and you know, it attracted them. It wasn't you know those boring canvas pieces that they were making and selling them because the children didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's yeah. an incredible story that that gives a gives a perspective on how how uh, when you say you touched uh, so many artists' lives. Uh, now we, I think we can understand more clearly what exactly and how <laughs> actually this is keeping uh, the art alive. I think that's the most important thing because maybe a couple of decades from now we would not have uh, you know seen any of this work. Um, So that the medicine a couple of decades there are more organizations like happy hands and we will yeah. <laughs> we can't be seen the yeah absolutely yeah. now i think that's uh, the the i think the most uh, positive story for me is uh, i think two things one is keeping the arts alive and keeping them uh, you know interested in making people live on the arts and that's how you know throughout centuries so that's how people have lived Uh, some of them but the second thing is um, how a very young person can uh, you know see something uh, a niche market and see there is an opportunity and do something about it something that uh, so if something touched uh, somebody's heart really deep then uh, it's possible that um, you know you can just uh, take it up and then move it forward uh, you don't have to be you know 30 years 40 years 50 years the age doesn't matter i think that's a positive message yeah it def- definitely doesn't matter i mean it's, it's just you've got to have the will and it will happen yeah i think the actually the best thing is to do it at an young age because then you have um, i i feel that uh, younger people are more courageous and they have the guts to think out of the box so you definitely stand <laughs> for that No, but um, I mean, it, it's true for all ages. At every age, there is some advantage or the other. So, at an older age, there is the advantage of experience, and at an even older age, there is the advantage of having done everything. And there is time to now experiment with the arts. So, yeah, I mean, every age has something to offer to the arts. And also, people might take them seriously because you know, <laughs> because yes, that 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 was one of my. biggest problems when i was starting out because i was a gray head and yeah. uh, the government in india definitely would not take me seriously and uh, the artists would wonder that you know how is this girl going to help us yeah. but the tip list they gave in us and i think that was most important yeah absolutely i think you have to take somebody who has a gray hair with you so compliment you know compliment to okay well <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before we end this call, um, if somebody is listening to this uh, conversation and they want to uh, get in touch with you or um, they want to contribute in one way or the other, uh, what? How can they contact you? Um, they can reach me at uh, Midhavi at the rate happyhands dot in or uh, go to our website happyhands dot in and leave us a message. And we are very quick on our emails and we are very close to our website. So yeah, we we get back. So you said the uh, Midhavi at the rate uh, happyhands dot in. Yes, oh, as well. Right. Always Facebook, Twitter, and. Um, We're also on our website to be active, and if you can leave us a message on the website, we'll get back. Okay, that is excellent. Uh, Madam, we that uh, I would like to thank you for uh, spending this time and also doing such an incredible job and uh, touching so many people's lives. Thank you, Sri Hari. Thank you so much for reaching out and letting me uh, interact with your audience and your listeners. Uh, really grateful for that, and I hope we can reach out to more supporters. I hope so too. Thank you very much and uh, have a good night. Thank you so much. Thanks. Friends, if you liked today's show, please go to youtube.com forward slash NRA Samay and click on the subscribe button. You will get notified every time we publish a new show. And you can also like us on our social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Google+.